ಓಂ ಅಜ್ಞಾನತಿರಾಂಧಸ್ಯಾಜ್ಞಾನಾಂಜನಶಲಾಕೆಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರುನ್ಮೀರಿತ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ನಮ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾದಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪ್ರೇಷ್ಠಾ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿವೇದಾಂತಸ್ವಾಮಿನ್ನಿತಿನಾಮಿನೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸಾರಸ್ವತೆ ದೇವೇ ಗೌರವಾಣೀ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶತಾರಿಣೆ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭೂ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸದಿ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ಸೊ ವಿ ವರ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಸ್ಯಾಕ್ರಿಫೈಸ್ ಆಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೈನ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತ ಸೊ ಇನ್ ದ ಥರ್ಡ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ವೈಲ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೈನಿಂಗ್ ಕರ್ಮ ಯೋಗ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬ್ಸ್ ವರ್ಕ್ ಡನ್ ಎ ಸ್ಯಾಕ್ರಿಫೈಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಪರ್ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಅದರ್ವೈಸ್ ವರ್ಕ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ದ ಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೆಟೀರಿಯಲ್ ಬಾಂಡೇಜ್ so in the 14th verse of the third chapter krishna says the cycle of sacrifice he describes in two verses the cycle of sacrifice and in one more verse he says those who don't follow the cycle of sacrifice what is the result of that so the 14th and the 15th verse 14th verse is annad bhavanti bhutani parjanyad anna sambhavah yajnad bhavati parjanyo yajna karma samudbhavah here four different uh, things are described first of all anna is what is called food grains uh, all living beings bhutani they subsist on food grains and parjanyad anna sambhavah food grains are produced from rains parjanya means rains and yajnad bhavati parjanyo and rains are produced by performance of sacrifice yajna and finally yajna karma sambhavah yajna is born of prescribed duties so ultimately see the link food grains are connected with rains without rains we can't have food grains and rains are connected with performance of sacrifice yajna without yajna there is no proper rainfall and yajna itself is uh, due to different people performing their prescribed duties what is the meaning of prescribed duties now where are these duties specifically mentioned where are these duties uh, outlined so that krishna says in the next verse uh, karma brahmo bhavam vidhi karma prescribed duties are uh, outlined in the vedas vedic literature then brahma means a vedic literature akshara samudbhavam the vedas are uh, given <coughs> by the supreme lord by krishna the supreme personality of god akshara tasmat therefore sarvagatam brahma nityam yajne pratishtitam therefore the sarvagatam brahma the all pervading supreme lord is always eternally situated in sacrifice yajne pratishtitam so the connection between performing sacrifice with uh, this uh, food grains on which we all depend for our subsistence so shri la prabhupada explains how 
does this cycle of sacrifice work? Srila Prabhupada gives some details here. First of all, uh, we have to understand that uh, the Supreme Lord is known as Yajna Purusha, the uh, personal beneficiary of all sacrifices. It means sacrifices, whatever they be, mentioned in the Vedas, whatever sacrifice they be, they are ultimately uh, meant for uh, being offered to the Supreme Lord Vishnu. Now he, Vishnu, is in this material world, Vishnu is the master, the supreme controller of all the Devatas. These Devatas are different uh, managers of different uh, necessities that are required for our uh, existence. Just like Indra, Chandra, Surya, Vayu, Agni, so all of them are actually officers appointed by the Supreme Lord Vishnu who manage material affairs. So the Vedas are directing you offer sacrifice to these Devatas who will actually supply properly. Indra is in charge of rains, so he will supply rains properly. But rainfall alone is not enough, we require proper sunshine, we require proper moonshine, we require proper uh, supply of uh, air, we require proper supply of uh, uh, all the various necessities, uh, natural uh, uh, supplies. So all the devatas, they will supply if we do proper sacrifices recommended in the Vedas and in that way uh, the food grain production is possible by proper rainfall and all the other necessities. So if somebody worships Krishna directly, then there is no need for them to separately offer sacrifice to the Devatas. So the devotees of the Lord, as was explained in the earlier verse, Yajna Shishta Ashinaha Santaha uh, the devotees, they only partake of remnants of food offered to Krishna, Krishna Prasadam only. So, the devotees simply worship Krishna and therefore there is no need for the devotees to separately worship any Devata. Therefore, the devotees, they always offer food to Krishna and partake the remnants which actually nourishes the body both materially and spiritually. So spiritually how does it nourish? Uh, by taking Krishna Prasadam our sinful reactions are all completely uh, destroyed, cleansed away and we also develop our uh, spiritual uh, uh, consciousness, Krishna consciousness in our heart by taking prasadam. Also taking prasadam, Krishna prasadam makes us immune to contamination of this material world. What is the contamination material world? The contamination material world is that every action that generally people do, it is contaminated by the three gunas. So the three gunas contaminate our activities because of which we become bound up by those gunas in this material world. So if we take prasadam, we are immune to the contamination of the gunas while living in this world. So it acts both ways. Prasadam itself purifies any contamination due to my earlier activities. And prasadam also makes me immune to no further contamination in this world. So, uh, somebody does not 
offer the sacrifice and take the remnants of sacrifice as their food, then they are subject to contamination of the three gunas in this material world. Regarding eatables, somebody may think, oh, non-vegetarian people, they don't have to uh, depend on food grains. But it is pointed out in the scriptures that even those who are flesh eaters, <clears throat> the flesh is available from those animals which are eating food grains. So, either directly we take partake food grains and vegetables or we depend on the animals which uh, feed on food grains and vegetables uh, which supply meat. So therefore, ultimately everybody, all human beings at least, have to depend on the production of the field and not on some big, big factories. And field production is due to sufficient rain from the sky and favorable conditions, uh, natural supplies. And all the devatas who control these natural supplies are devotees of Vishnu. Therefore, if the Supreme Lord is satisfied by sacrifice, by performing sacrifice or by directly worshipping him, then all the devatas will supply all our necessities without our, uh, without any need for us to uh, separately do anything else. Now, the, see the link. The food grains are uh, dependent on Rains. Rains are dependent on sacrifice. Sacrifice is dependent on what? It is dependent on everyone, all the human beings doing their prescribed duties. Now, let us try to understand uh, why performing prescribed duties as described in the Vedas is considered to be sacrifice. Now, <coughs> uh, it is explained that uh, these prescribed duties are given in the Vedas and the Vedas are given by the Supreme Lord. So ultimately, everybody has to uh, follow the working directions given by the Supreme Lord in the Vedas if they have to get their necessities. They have to follow the working directions given in the Vedas. So what are these prescribed duties? They are codes of working directions for all human beings given in the Vedas. The Vedas are given by the Supreme Lord who is the creator of this world. So if we do not follow the working directions given in the Vedas, then there is a discrepancy in our performance of our duties. Uh, if we do not follow the Vedas, that means we are not properly performing our prescribed duties. Prescribed means something which is uh, outlined, which is definitely uh, instructed. So, the Vedas are giving us the way to work in such a way that we can get our necessities while we are living here and we can also prepare ourselves to get out of this material existence or bondage. Both are given in the Vedas. Uh, the very purpose of this creation we have to understand. Uh, why this material creation? Sometimes people ask this question, why has God created this world? With so many uh, complications apparently. No, there is no complication. This world is created to satisfy the material desires of the various living beings. So the way the world is created is everyone according to his desire to enjoy in this world gets a particular type of body. But among all these bodies, though every body is some facility for enjoying a particular type of material desire, the human form of body, not only can people satisfy some type of desires, they can also uh, understand 
get the clue that what miseries are inflicted or forced upon us which we don't want disease old age death we can overcome all these miseries by actually uh, understanding who is who am i who is god and what is my relationship with god so the vedas are specially meant for human beings to understand who they are who is god and what is their relationship with god and by understanding this they can actually prepare themselves to actually return to god god's personal abode personal kingdom in the spiritual world where there is no disease no old age no death no miseries no uh, uh, difficulties no dangers no calamities nothing so the whole purpose of this creation is to give a opportunity for those who are forgotten god forgotten krishna to remind them uh, that you belong to krishna you don't belong to this world and if you think somehow you will live in this world by making some adjustment krishna describes in the bhagavad gita and even in the vedas it is described that this material world is not a place which is uh, fit for our uh, subsistence for our living because this material world there is danger in every step padam padam yat padam there is danger in every step so that is the nature of this material existence because we don't belong here we are not meant to live here so therefore we should understand i don't belong to this place having come here i should uh, uh, i should prepare myself to get out of this place therefore uh, we should follow the vedic directions if at all we want to get out and we should actually uh, so this following the vedic directions leads to our performing uh sacrifice it is uh, identical to somebody who does their prescribed duties for the pleasure of vishnu this is very important merely doing some duties without uh, caring for the spirit proper spirit in which such duty should be done to give a very simple example supposing somebody is working in a factory now they have to work in the factory according to the assigned work they cannot just go to the factory and say i'll do some work no it's not going to be effective neither they'll be allowed to do that so they go to the factory to work they have to do what they are assigned to work by ultimately the owner of the factory just like the owner of a factory he has set up the factory for let us say producing some let's say bicycles now the goal is how to produce a bicycle by so many people doing so many different activities to produce first of all the uh, get some raw materials produce some parts assemble the parts uh, and then uh, actually uh, a cycle is uh, produced so uh, this has to be organized so the owner of the factory has actually organized the whole factory he has got the necessary managers and the managers have got their supervisors and supervisors have got the actual ground level workforce to actually do whatever is required to produce a bicycle now uh, every person ultimately is trying to work for contributing to produce the bicycle the purpose for which the factory exists the purpose for which the owner set up the factory only then there is meaningful whatever work they do they can't simply come to the factory and do some work according to their own choice and expect that uh, they'll be contributing for the production no they will not be the purpose for which the factory is there similarly in this world the world is set up in such a way that everybody does their 
specific prescribed duty for ultimately everyone in the world to make progress towards getting out of this material existence and going to the real home where we belong, Krishna's abode. That is the way this world is set up. So we fit in exactly in some particular uh, part we have to play. It is just like when you are driving on the road, you have to follow the traffic rules. You can understand what happens if people don't follow the traffic rules. Right? There will be total chaos. Similarly, in this world, we cannot do or get or organize ourselves in such a way that we will do everything what we require to obtain whatever we require. No. I gave the example the other day that uh, everybody doesn't grow cotton. Supposing we want uh, to have a, a dress. Everybody doesn't grow cotton. And even if somebody grows cotton, you think they will sit and produce the yarn from the cotton and then the yarn has to be woven into a fabric and the fabric has to be uh, stitched into a cloth, into a proper dress. Everybody cannot do it. Even if somebody were to do some few things out of so many things, everybody cannot produce food grains, everybody cannot uh, uh, do every single thing. No. So, just like doctors have to do their duty of taking care of the medical uh, requirements, health requirements, the engineers have to do their duty, the farmers have to do their duty, the weavers have to do their duty, the potters have to do their duty, only then the society will be properly uh, working. Similarly, this world itself, it is not just at the level of few human beings in an organized uh, setup in the a closed uh, uh, setup like a village or a town. No, entire human society itself and what we don't consider is there is not just one planet in the Lord's creation. There are millions of planets and each planet has got different uh, categories of persons. Different categories of persons. There are more intelligent uh, beings on higher planets and there are less intelligent beings on lower planets than the humans on this earth, the civilized humans on this earth. So, in any case, everyone has got prescribed duty so that they contribute ultimately for the overall purpose of this creation and by doing so, they are provided the necessities and by following the Vedic directions, they can make progress to ultimately get out of this material existence and go to the original home, to the real place where they belong. And Krishna says briefly, that evam pravartitam chakram nanu vartayati hayaha aghayo indriya rama mogham pathasa jivati. If uh, one does not follow the cycle of sacrifice mentioned in the Vedas, then such a person leads a life of sin. Aghayu. Agha means sin. And ayu means his life is full of sins. Indriya Ramaha, then what does he live for? He simply lives for enjoying his senses. That's all. People who don't follow Vedic uh, directions, don't follow scriptures, uh, are not God conscious, Krishna conscious. They are simply living for enjoying. Like the atheistic philosophy. Uh, eat, drink and be merry. Enjoy as long as you are living in this world. After death comes, and when death comes, everything is finished. This is atheistic uh, understanding and it's totally wrong because with death, we don't actually, the actual person inside the body does not die. We have heard this. We actually change our body. So we cannot end our life simply uh, because of death. No. We are eternal. So our existence continues and will be punished for not doing uh, our duties. So, not doing our prescribed duties is uh, punishable by the laws of uh, nature. So, therefore, Krishna says, 
uh, one should follow this cycle of sacrifice. Now, this cycle of sacrifice also we have to understand from the Vedas, just like Krishna says, perform your prescribed duties for the satisfaction of Vishnu, that is called Yajna. Yajna means to satisfy the Yajna Purusha. Now, why just merely performing duties is not enough? Why it has to be done to satisfy Vishnu or the Yajna Purusha? That is because uh, the goal of doing our prescribed duty is not just to get some necessities. No, it is not just that. Because as I mentioned several times, we are not meant to live here, make adjustment and do our duties and live here. No, we are meant to prepare ourselves to go to the spiritual world. So, in order to also prepare ourselves to go to the spiritual world, we should do our duties in such a way that it is pleasing to Vishnu. By that what happens? Our own Krishna consciousness, our spiritual consciousness, our original consciousness is awakened. Our forgetfulness of Krishna is removed. We are reviving our memory of Krishna. We understand, oh, I belong to Krishna. I have forgotten him. I have got a relationship with Krishna. Simply if I re-establish in my relationship with Krishna, then automatically all my problems are solved. So, um, there, is an, uh, there is a pastime of Krishna uh, mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavatam where Krishna illustrates how some Yajnik Brahmanas, they were doing some Vedic ritualistic sacrifice without understanding the proper spirit of doing this sacrifice. So once when Krishna and Balaram along with some covered boys they had gone to the forest for uh, taking the calves for grazing, uh, <clears throat> then uh, they had left early morning and they had not carried with them some food which they normally carry. So the coward boys began to feel hungry after some time and they said, uh, Dear Krishna and Balaram, do something. We are being harassed by hunger. So <clears throat> Krishna said, Okay, if you want to uh, get some food nearby, there are some Brahmanas performing sacrifice. So for the sacrifice, they would have prepared a lot of food stuff. So go and beg from them, give us something. For uh, we are feeling very hungry and we are not brought any our regular food. So please give us and beg on behalf of us, Krishna and Balaram. So the covered boys went little away from the place spot where they were. Uh, where they had arrived and they had allowed the cows to graze. They were sitting there, Krishna and Balaram. The coward boys went nearby and saw one big sacrificial arena where so many Brahmanas along with their wives were there. Their, the sacrifice was in progress. So the boys went, bowed down to the Brahmanas and requested. On behalf of Krishna and Balaram, we are requesting, please give us some. Uh, food which are prepared for the sacrifice. And then the Brahmanas thought it is something uh, very strange that sacrifice is going on. In the middle of that, these boys are asking for food. Until the sacrificial offering is over, how can we give food? So they were silent, thinking that these boys, these covered boys, what do they know about sacrifice? They don't know anything. So they just continued doing the sacrifice. Then the covered boys told them that you see, we understand what are the technical details of a sacrifice. They wanted to tell that because of our association with Krishna and Balaram, we know what is a, a Vedic sacrifice, what are the different steps. Uh, so a Vedic sacrifice, they explained, consists of choosing the proper place to do the sacrifice, choosing the proper time, Specific ingredients are to be offered in the sacrifice. There are specific mantras to be chanted. 
there are specific procedures to be followed rituals to be followed and there should be a qualified priest who can properly direct the performance of the sacrifice there should be a proper priest to perform the chanting of the mantras accurately there should be a proper fire ignited and there are devatas who have to be offered the oblations in the fire specific sacrifice means specific devatas and then there is a performer of the sacrifice is called the yajaman and then there is the actual offering itself in the sacrifice all these constitute a complete proper vedic fire sacrifice now you are at the stage where the initiation of the performance sacrifice is over but you are not yet come to the stage where the animal to be sacrificed uh, that stage you have not come so in between the initiation of the performer of the sacrifice to do this particular sacrifice and sacri sacrificing the animal between that you are permitted by the vedic rules and regulations of sacrifice to actually uh, give some food which is prepared for the sacrifice so the brahmanas somehow thought these boys are speaking something about the procedure of the ritual but after all they are covered boys what do they know so they just ignored they even ignored the fact that these boys had told we are come on behalf of krishna and balaram so they were too much ritualistic and they just uh, did not bother to again respond after the covered boys explained to them details of the sacrifice so the covered boys saw they are not responding they became disappointed and came back to krishna balaram and told those brahmanas are not responding at all so then krishna explained to the covered boys this is the way of actually going and begging for some food that whenever you go for begging you should not actually uh, uh, be disappointed if the person from whom you beg does not give you anything so that is very very important you should not become disappointed then he said now you go and ask from the wives of the brahmanas and be assured they will give you because they are my devotees krishna told them. so the covered boys immediately went so they were very hungry so they went to the wives of the brahmanas and told krishna and balram had come nearby on their behalf here asking for some food immediately the wives of the brahmanas they had heard about krishna and they were very much eager to have darshan of krishna so they immediately took the different kinds of food stuff they had prepared in different pots carrying it on their head they all started off where is krishna where is balaram we want to have darshan of them so they said come with us so then they took all the pots the women took all the pots and they were being stopped by their relatives by their husbands by their elders but they didn't care they wanted to have darshan of krishna and balram so against the wishes of their elders relatives and all they just came out with the boys and the boys brought them to krishna and balram immediately they offered their respects these wives of the brahmanas the women and uh, they uh, krishna welcomed them and krishna said yes what can i do for you then uh, uh, krishna began to uh, explain to them that uh, you see uh, you have left the sacrifice in between and come it is not proper you go back because you have to assist your husbands in doing the sacrifice after all the sacrifice is ultimately meant for me only so through the sacrifice even though your husbands don't understand that the sacrifice is meant for us Uh, krishna and balaram but still uh, uh, you go and assist them in the completion of the sacrifice then the women began to say that oh we have come against the wish of our husbands and elders so we have no other shelter other than you so kindly don't disappoint us by not giving us uh, shelter please don't ask us to go back then krishna assured 
that uh, you can actually still uh, worship me by remembering me by chanting my name by worshiping my deity form by offering authorized sacrifices to me through these sacrifices you are worshiping me only uh, so you go back and be assured be assured that your husbands will not uh, rebuke you or not they will not refuse to take you back they'll be happy that you come back because their sacrifice is incomplete without your assistance so they'll be happy to take you back please go so then uh, they left behind all the pots and they went away and then when the husband saw their wives come back they were so much relieved that oh now we can perform our sacrifice so they welcomed back their wives and they continued with the sacrifice completed sacrifice but after completing the sacrifice they realized that uh, our wives have understood that who is this krishna and balaram and what is the purpose of the sacrifice better than us we are supposed to be learned brahmanas but in the course of doing this rituals we have forgotten the aim of the sacrifice ultimately it is simply to please krishna so when krishna is asking for something directly we are neglected and ignored to give to krishna whereas through the sacrifice when we pour something into the sacrificial fire the grains or the ghee or whatever nice edibles actually through the fire it is krishna only who is consuming that krishna has got different forms he is present in his universal form in the in the in the form of in the form of fire fire is the mouth of the universal form of krishna krishna has got a universal form in this world so that universal form the sun and moon are his two eyes fire is his mouth in the universal form so actually when sacrificial fire the ingredients are offered it is actually an offering to krishna only uh, what is being apparently burnt away in the fire and wasted just like some people atheists think when you offer something in a sacrificial fire you are unnecessarily burning valuable ghee or some grains which can be given to some poor people or somebody else can actually uh, benefit from uh, these grains and ghee instead you are burning it by putting in a sacrificial fire what they don't understand is it is actually an offering to the supreme lord who is the supplier of everything in gratitude for him we offer so therefore um, uh, the brahmanas could understand that actually their wives were the Uh, more advanced transcendentalists than them and they began to glorify their wives and began to condemn themselves that we could not recognize the supreme lord who has appeared as a covered boy and we thought he is just some ordinary covered boy uh, we could not understand that he is the supreme lord who is the object of all sacrifices so that's why it is said performing the sacrifices or the rituals is not enough according to the vedic directions but it is also important to understand who is the ultimate goal of all sacrifices that is vishnu or krishna and through the sacrifice we are meant to please vishnu or krishna and then only the sacrifice is perfect and complete i have a few questions here i'll try to answer them <clears throat> why is lord krishna uh, not mentioned in other world civilization that existed 5000 years ago yes 5000 years ago krishna appeared and there was a whole uh, 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 society with krishna as the king in dwaraka krishna as the prince in mathura krishna as a covered boy in vrindavan why it is not mentioned in other world civilization because they don't know they don't know about our glorious uh, details of our glorious uh, civilization they have got a wrong idea that uh, 5000 years back uh, there was only some stone age uh, 
people uncivilized like that. That is their wrong understanding. The most advanced civilization has existed since the beginning of creation in this Bharat Bhumi and that uh, modern day people who are not conversant with history properly, they are unaware of that. That's why they don't know about it. When you say super soul is in every atom in the material universe, so Paramatma exists in non-living beings as well, super soul exists in non-living beings, yes, super soul has entered into everything, matter and the living entities, bodies, different living entities have entered different bodies, inside every living entity's body also, Paramatma has entered, so he is present in every uh, thing material and everything spiritual, he is entered into everything and only because he has entered is everything actually working, is everything going on very nicely, without his presence nothing will work. Some people sacrifice eating non-veg food for a certain period. Is it really sacrifice? Yes, it is not the prescribed sacrifice or duty in the Vedas, but it is a kind of sacrifice in that we are not supposed to eat non-vegetarian food. So some people realize that it's not uh, proper for them to eat non-vegetarian food, so they may restrict eating. Uh, even giving up eating on certain days is beneficial for them to that extent they are committing less of sinful activity. But it is expected that by practicing giving up on some days gradually they will be able to completely give up eating non-vegetarian food and they will start taking only vegetarian food which is enough for our subsistence and which is easily available. So in that sense it is beneficial for them, though it is not counted as a sacrifice in terms of doing the prescribed duty mentioned in the Vedas, but still it is beneficial for them. So we'll start with. Thank you. Sorry.